Hey guys, welcome back. We've been talking about three-phase induction motor and uh, you know how it operates and why it operates and how to calculate the sync speed. Um, I want to talk a little bit about troubleshooting the three-phase motor because this guy is actually, you know, easier to troubleshoot than the single-phase AC motor. And the first thing you need to know about, you know, troubleshooting a three-phase motor, guys, is going to be, you know, it's the same as a single phase motor, right? If the thing is drawing too much current, most of the time it's going to be the low that's the problem. Because just like a single phase motor, this thing as you load it up will draw more and more current. And if you manage to load it up, you know, to over its FLA, it'll it'll try to run there, okay? And it'll probably be tripping out the uh, overloads. So a motor that's tripping its overloads most of the time, guys, is going to be... Um, because the load is exceeding the horsepower of the motor. But there's a few nice things about the three-phase motor uh, that you can do that you can't do with the single phase, and that is to compare, you know, the windings to one another. So if you get your ammeter out, guys, and this thing is running and it's tripping out overloads, you can put your ammeter on, you know, the three wires that are entering the motor, right? And so this is what you're actually looking at here. It could be Y, it could be Delta, it doesn't matter, but it's going to have the three phase windings, you know, wound on the, on the phase poles in there. And you can come out here and clamp on there, clamp on there, and clamp on there, and see what the current is. Now, you know, the current should be in a perfect world, something up to the FLA of the motor, right? But if the motor is exceeding its FLA or traping out, you can check them. And what you really want to see there is that the three currents are the same, okay? There is not going to be, I've never seen it, guys, where I've been clamping on to a three-phase AC motor and checking the three phases and having currents that are different. Or I have actually had it. But as soon as you see it, guys, you know there's something wrong with that motor, okay? There's nothing that you can do to the load of a three-phase motor that would, you know, cause the currents in the three windings to be different, okay? And it doesn't matter if the motor is wired Y or delta, and most of the time you don't care, okay? All you care about is, are these three currents the same if I clamp on an ammeter on there? Now, you know what? do I mean by the same, okay? So let's say I had a motor that, you know, the FLA was 10 amps and I'm, it's running and I'm measuring the current and it says 8.3 amps on one phase, 8.1 amps on the second phase, and uh, 8.15 uh, amps on the third phase, okay? I would consider those to be the same current, okay? Because they're not going to be exactly the same, okay? But they're going to be very, very close. If you were getting eight point something on all three phases, you know, I would probably say that that's good. If you have a motor that's in bad condition, guys, you're going to have like 13, 7, and 8 or something like that, okay? You're going to have something that's way off. So don't get too wound up about them being exactly the same be more concerned that they are in the same ballpark, okay? If they're in the same ballpark, the motor windings are probably okay, and you might want to start to look at something else. Now, here's the other thing. Uh, let's say uh, you're not sure, you want to check the motor more carefully, so you shut the motor down, and you start checking the winding resistance. Now, if you're checking the winding resistance, you're going to be checking from here, to here, right? Or maybe from here to here, or maybe you're checking from here to here. It doesn't matter which two wires you check, guys. Either one, you know, no matter what you're checking, you're going to be checking like two of the phases, right? And so you're going to see a certain amount of resistance, and it's going to be just like the single phase motor, guys. You're not going to know how much resistance those windings are going to be. But the nice thing about the three phase machine is now you can compare your resistance values to, you know, some other values. So you're checking from here to here, it says 13 ohms. You check from here, it says 13.1 ohms. You check from here to here, it says 13.5 ohms. You know, you don't know if 13 is right, but it's probably right since all three of them measure that. Okay, guys? And so because you can compare your measurements, 
for each of the three places that you can check your measurements, you can have a pretty good idea of whether the motor is in good condition or bad condition with a, you know, ohm meter. All right, guys? And uh, again, if I'm getting the same first number, okay, 13 point something, 13 point something, 13 point something, then I would be pretty happy or pretty confident that uh, that motor was pretty good, okay? If you're getting 10, 7, and 6, okay, I've never seen a motor that was good that had a really weird, you know, ohms measurement that was that far off, okay? So if you're getting different ohms measurements or different current measurements, you can pretty much stop there. That motor is no good. You can start disconnecting and, and you know, getting a re ready to replace or send out, okay? But if you're getting the same measurements on current and the same measurements when you're measuring the resistance of the windings, then you're pretty confident that there's nothing wrong with the motor. If the motor is running at over if FLA, you should probably start looking at the load to see why it's so hard to drive. Okay, guys? Now, you can also check with an ohmmeter from line one to ground, line two to ground, and line three to ground. And when you're checking from line to ground, you should be expecting to see OL or unlimited resistance, right? If you're seeing some low number like zero or one or two or 10 or anything weird like that, it shouldn't be anything but OL, right? With an ohmmeter to ground, from line to ground. And it doesn't matter. You know, check all three lines to ground. They should all be open, right, guys? And uh, if you're really not sure, you know, your motor's blowing fuses, but uh, it's showing that it's open from line to ground, that's where you might want to get your megger out, right? And actually do a good job of stressing the insulation in the motor to make sure that it's not just that your ohmmeter isn't outputting enough voltage to, you know, to short it out. Okay, guys? So, um, yeah, so that's just some tips on how to troubleshoot a three-phase motor. It's really nice because you can compare your numbers to, you know, the other phases and stuff like that. If a motor is blowing fuses immediately, guys, and this goes for single-phase and three-phase, you know, there's two kind of things that happen, right? One is that the motor runs for a while and then trips the overloads. The other is that you can't even get it to run, right? You're actually turning it on and it goes boom. And, uh, you know, the fuses blow or the breaker trips or something like that. If the motor is running and it's overloads, that's usually related to the load, right? Or maybe the motor is weird. But a motor that shorts, you know, that trips the overloads immediately, that's usually related to, you know, the windings being shorted, right, guys? Um, and you can usually find that with a mega or an ohm meter pretty easily. And you'd also usually smell it with your nose. Okay, guys. So, uh, you know, there's also a possibility that it trips because it can't start right away and there's too much current and, uh, to get it to start. And that happens typically with fuses, especially if they've been recently replaced and somebody didn't put time delay fuses or something like that in. Because don't forget that all motors will draw a lot of current at startup, right? Even good motors will draw, you know, five to seven times their rated current at startup. And that's going to be enough to blow fuses if the fuses aren't sized correctly. Okay. So, don't assume that the guy who came before you put the right fuses in or anything like that. You know, you should always check your fuses, make sure they're the correct fuses for the load, time delay because it's a motor, things like that. But if it's the correct fuses and it's blowing fuses, then usually the thing is shorted and you'll be able to see that with your own meter or your digital multimeter. By the way, we didn't talk about it when we talked about single phase, but there is no benefit or checking from line to line with your megger, okay? You can't, I mean, you could do it. You could put a, your megger from line one to line three and crank it, and it's just going to show a dead short, even if the motor is in good condition, because if these two windings are 20 ohms or something like that, a megger is designed to measure millions of ohms, okay, guys? And so it will see 20 ohm winding as zero ohms, okay? It'll just say, oh, that's a short. And that doesn't mean that the motor's shorted, okay? In fact, don't even ever do it. Don't put your megger from line to line. Your megger is designed to check insulation, guys. 
and it always should be connected line to ground. All right, guys, because you're checking the condition of the insulation to ground. And if you see a zero ohm insulation, that's a bad motor. But don't be fooled into thinking that you can check to see if the motor shorted with a mega from line to line because the 20 or 30 ohms of these windings will, your mega will think that's a short. Okay, guys? So come back and we'll talk a little bit more about, you know, motor windings and stuff like that or wiring configurations. And uh, then we'll keep going.